Happy Holy Hump Day on this May 26, everyone. I'm Pastor Robert, and welcome to this midweek time where I can share some spiritual thoughts and reflections with you. I thought it would be good today to talk about how important the hymnal is to the life of the church. It wasn't too long ago that we started allowing for people to use the hymnal in our in-person worship service because of the global pandemic, but now we are able to use the hymnal. We're still going to continue to have the lyrics of the hymns up on the screen so that people can see that uh, more easily. Also, for those that watch online, it's important for us to keep doing that. And um, But you know, now we can use the hymnal uh, to see the notes and to be able to follow along that way, which I think is wonderful. So I just thought it would be interesting to share a little bit about how uh, the hymnal is categorized. Uh, the hymns are not in there haphazardly. They're arranged uh, theologically. So I just want to cover some of those uh, theological categories. So the first grouping of hymns would be called um, under the title, The Glory of the Triune God. And you can actually see that listed in the um, above each hymn. You can see what category it falls under. And so uh, the very first hymn of the glory of the triune God in that grouping is, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing this wonderful Charles Wesley hymn. Uh, Charles Wesley was the brother of John Wesley, who was the one that put the, the Wesleyan theology into music. And so, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, which is one of my favorite hymns, is part of that large category at the beginning. It's called The Glory of the Triune God. And these are just general hymns of praise and thanksgiving for who God is. Um, and they're often used at the beginning of the worship service, which I think is uh, a wonderful thing. We begin with praise. We begin with worship and adoration. And then there's a second grouping of hymns. And this is more specifically related to the grace of Jesus Christ. So one example of a hymn under that category would be All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. That is such a great rousing hymn that lifts up Jesus as our King. And also that, that hymn and the category of hymns under the grace of Jesus Christ also are often used at the beginning of worship uh, where we do offer our praise in this sense specifically to Jesus Christ, who is part of the Trinity. And then we have the third grouping of hymns, and you might have guessed this, the next category is the power of the Holy Spirit. So there you have the glory of the triune God hymns, you have the grace of Jesus Christ hymns, and then the third category in our hymnal, those hymns are um, located in the power of the Holy Spirit um, uh, grouping of hymns. And so, surely the presence of the Lord is an example of the power of the Holy Spirit hymn. Surely the presence of the Lord has a lot of Holy Spirit imagery in that hymn. The fourth grouping of hymns is known as, and this is interesting, this is the Wesleyan understanding of God's grace, and it's divided into three parts. So it's the prevenient grace category of hymns, the justifying grace category of hymns, and the sanctifying grace category of hymns. So uh, prevenient grace would be John Wesley's understanding of God's grace that goes before us, before we're aware of it. So God is always inviting us into a relationship with God. God always makes the first move. So these hymns under prevenient grace would include hymns that do call us and they invite us uh, because we don't make a step to God until first God makes a step toward us. So an example of a prevenient grace hymn would be Just As I Am Without One Plea. It's God's inviting us to come just as we are. Um, then there's the justifying grace, and that's where um, God reconciles us. God uh, redeems us. Um, God makes us one with God. And an example, there's so many great hymns in, in this category of justifying grace. Grace greater than our sin would be a great example of that. And again, I just encourage you to look, um, to read these uh, verses of these hymns, the lyrics of these hymns theologically, and just to see why it's under these categories. Then the last part of that three-part uh, grace, uh, Wesleyan grace, is sanctifying grace hymns. And uh, a, a hymn that would be included in that would be Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, because that's a hymn that's calling us to live out our lives, to be holy as God is holy, and to, 
as John Wesley would say, uh, to live a life that leads to perfection. Now, I know we don't attain perfection, but Wesley believed that sanctifying grace, sanctify means to make holy, is a process even after we are born again that we are to live out our lives in a way where we're always moving closer and closer to Christian perfection. That's the goal, and that's the encouragement that we have. So that's sanctifying grace. And then there's a fifth grouping of hymns known as the church. That's a very broad category. So lots of hymns there. One example would be Go Make of All Disciples, which is the main mission of the church to go out and make disciples. And then the sixth grouping of hymns would be considered the new heaven and new earth. And this is uh, properly placed at the end of the hymnal because that is the ultimate goal of the Christian faith. The ultimate good news of the Christian faith is that one day God will remake this earth and heaven and earth will come together in this beautiful way, the way it was always intended to be, and we will have this new creation. So the example um, of a hymn in this category, which is the last hymn in our hymnal, is Marching to Zion. Marching to Zion, marching to that city of God, uh, when God will make all things new. And then at the very end of the hymnal, we have what's called the Psalter. Uh, you don't pronounce the letter P, but it, it uh, is Psalter. And the Psalter represents uh, the Psalms. And so we have done this before in worship where there's a leader and people response throughout the Psalm. And sometimes we sing a chorus in between uh, you'll see a letter R, and that, that refers to refrain, and then we'll sing that. But oftentimes, we simply do a leader and um, people response. But we like to um, share in the Psalms, and that's the Psalter, and that's in the very back. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, when I select hymns, whenever I select a hymn for the opening hymn, it, it does tend to be one of these first categories because, as I said, these are hymns of worship and praise and adoration. And you'll notice that the pronouns in these hymns are plural. And very rarely will I have an opening hymn that's about me or I. I mean, that's fine that we have this relationship with Jesus personally, but when we gather as the church, it's always wonderful for our opening hymn to be a collective uh, singing together and we're using the plural plural of our and we, we come to praise the Lord. And so there is more uh, plural language in that opening hymn. And there's appropriate times to use more personal uh, pronouns with hymns, especially toward the end of the service. So that's just me <laughs> thinking theologically when I put these hymns together. So I just thought that might be helpful for you uh, just to be aware of that. And I always put a notation in my personal United Methodist hymnal of when I use a hymn, so I know if uh, I have been using that hymn a lot or if I have not used that hymn in quite a while. And so it's always hard to sing your favorite hymn because there are so many hymns, so many good hymns, and so we do try to choose hymns that reflect the theology of that Sunday or the scripture and worship theme of that Sunday. So um, this past Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost, and that's the giving of the Holy Spirit upon the church. So that's why I'm wearing red today. I'm continuing in that Pentecost theme. Um, and uh, we sang the hymn, O Spirit of the Living God, uh, number 539 in our hymnal, a very wonderful Holy Spirit hymn, very appropriate to use this past Sunday. I invite you to join us this Sunday for Trinity Sunday. We are going to sing the hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's a hymn devoted to the Trinity. It even has the word Trinity in it. That'll be our opening hymn. The theme for this Sunday, uh, the worship theme will be Children of the Triune God. And uh, so please join us for worship this Sunday at 1030, both an in-person worship option with um, the gathering together of God's people uh, to sing God's praises. And also we continue to have an online option you can watch on our church's YouTube channel also at 1030 as a live stream. So please join us this Sunday, and may we continue to be uh, a people who sing our faith. <laughs>